Mm-hmm. You mean confusion meaning identity? Not necessarily identity, but remember that we are in a spiritual environment, meaning the global or the, the universal aspect is highly spiritual. And remember that we talked about an objective. The objective was punishment, mm-hmm. punishment of 400 years in, of slavery. So the judge has already made um, the decision of the punishment. He also made the decision as to where these Israelites were going to serve their punishment, how long it was going to be, and so on and so forth. So they couldn't or they wouldn't naturally just go there and say, okay, enslave me. Somebody had to do that. Right. That's where the casting comes in. The Ishmaelites were selected as the sellers. The uh, Christianity was selected as the buyers. But neither the Ishmaelites nor Christianity were strong enough to do that. Mm-hmm. So they had to be given a leg up. And it just so happens that the Israelites were with them, and they supported them in that mm-hmm. endeavor. Maybe in good faith, thinking they'll get it in return. They never got it. You mentioned earlier concerning your your ancestors yes. and how they suffered at the hands of Christianity because they were Israelites. That period in European history is called the Inquisition. Right. I like to call it the Christian Inquisition. Mm-hmm. They look like Christians, but as you said, they were not Christians. You see? But saying that is one thing. Proving it is something completely different. So they, they didn't practice openly. Is that what you're trying to say? That's right. They after and Initially, they did. Because under the Islamic banner, after they arrived in Iberia, they were allowed to practice their own culture. Mm-hmm. Israelite, you had the Israelites doing their thing. You had the, uh, the Muslims doing their thing. And the few Christians that were there were also doing their thing. And that's one of the things that was well established at the beginning because the Israelites, as you know, they dominated the entire perspective and they were confident in what they did Mm -hmm. and serving their God. So they don't have to, you know, hurt anyone if they didn't agree with them. Okay, fine. That's why I like to say, stay in your own lane. If you stay in your lane, everything is fine. It's when you cross that barrier without the proper indication, then you create Um, the possibility of an accident, and you can hurt yourself. So initially, everyone had an opportunity, and the entire Iberian Peninsula was just so uh, um, productive. Everyone came from all over Europe to learn Mm -hmm. from these people and to study and and to to gain economic advantages, etc. When the Israelites started to get really high, on the social ladder, then others, primarily the Christians, started to say, well, what have we done here? You know, this is not what we wanted. You know, we wanted them, maybe they can stay, because obviously the Israelites were smarter, and that can be uh, proven all over. If you look at the architectural design of of Iberia Mm -hmm. and other places, you will see it. And this was just the beginning. We can go on and on from this point into a wide range you know, medicine, science, uh, music, uh, everything, they were there. They did it. The record is there. To, to We can see that even today. But once you recognize that, and this is the, the Christianity, that, and the, the, the mistake that Christianity made is they wanted to use the same book that the Israelites mm-hmm. were using. Then they could not compete because they don't understand it, right? And the Israelites did. So you don't want to give way to the Israelites, and then you play second fiddle if it's your land. You want to be the top dog, and that's what Christianity had to do. So they all look alike after generations or close enough, right? Maybe a little dark tinge here and there. One way to prove, then, who is who, because you can deny that you're serving the God by yes. name on the whatever. They call the males over. Okay, drop your pants. Hmm. Wow. And when they see a circumcision, then they know who you are. And that's just one of many different tricks. 
that they played and things like that. Therefore, th at that point, they would even burn you at the stake or take away your property and kick you out of the country. They did whatever they wanted to do because it was law at that time. And one of the, the things that they used to do, they would say that, you know, and this goes to the, the appearance issue, that all the Christians, they called them, how do I say this? The so-called white man was a Christian, and the so-called black man was not. He was heathen. Mm -hmm. I, I think the, the Pope will call them uh, Saracens or Moors or whatever, you know. And um, all of these things were exposed then, but what it did is give Christianity an upper hand over everybody else. Now, you said something. You think over time uh, the Israelites lost some of their culture, especially when you said that uh, they had to show if they were circumcised or not. I could see how some people would stop circumcision just to save their life and their family's life. So after a few generations, they would probably forget to, you know, the law of circumcision or it just becomes normal not to get circumcised. It, it, it became very difficult for them to practice their culture. And, and that was just one example, but a lot of other examples that, that can be given over time. So the, the whole idea was to bring that pressure, you know, intense and more intense to the point where, like you said, they would eventually quit, you know, and if they don't want to convert, then you had to go. And you find that there were many times when they were kicked out from different countries. Yeah, they were in Spain before Portugal at this point, right? That, well, they, they came into Spain, and I, I don't separate the two countries. I, I, okay. I put it as one. There are two kingdoms. One is Portugal, one is España, whatever they want to call it. And they, they were there. Then when Portugal became their own kingdom, then things were different. But they still, they were in Spain, and they got kicked out. Some went to Portugal, some went to Northern Africa, some went to um, France, Southern France, and, and elsewhere in Europe. Some went into Rome, for example. Wherever they could find an opportunity to serve the nation of, of the people of that, they were welcome. But once they begin to get too strong, too powerful, then they they're, had to they're killed. Ah, I see. So it seems like there's some kind of cycle there every time. It's like usury. They used the Israelites for whatever re reason. Mm -hmm. They got too powerful. They kicked them out. Right. And that, that was the cycle that they went through. You know, in 1066, for example, they helped William to go from France to Britain. He invaded Britain, and uh, he became the king there. And the, our Israelite ancestors facilitated that transfer of power. And they did that because they had the financial means to to accommodate him, and he said, okay, you'll pay, and I will let you come. And they went into Britain. They established in England uh, a lot of interesting things, not only um, the legal perspective, the educational perspective, and so on and so forth. But then, in the, I think it was in the 12th century, they were kicked out. Again, because they, they were becoming too powerful, too strong, and too independent, mm -hmm. because you don't need the rest if you know what you're doing. You said that the Israelites left uh, architecture behind. Yes. Uh, did they also leave schools or yes. libraries? Yes. They, again, you're entering in Spain, for example, Cordoba and, and other places. You're entering a region where there were no books. Zero. Mm -hmm. Right? And no one could read and write. All of that educational um, opportunities were relegated to the priesthood the Catholics, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and they're, they're close buddies. But the average person, they had no reason to be writing anything. You're talking about the Europe's, yeah, yeah, Europeans. The Europeans. And it's really, really fascinating how all of this occurred because we had a situation in Northern Africa, for example, if you want to go there, okay, where the Israelites were living in Carthage, this in Carthage was a Phoenician city. This was at a time when the Roman Empire was at its strongest. And they did so well there, they almost they continued from the apostles 
going back to the days of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. And they used to appoint the bishops to the various European cities that wanted to study according to Israelite scriptures. They appointed a bishop to Rome, for example, right? At that time, we had a situation where idolatry was very, very powerful in Europe. But there were also Europeans who were interested in learning about the truth. So we facilitated that aspect of it. And we would submit to them or to, or to approve and send to them a bishop who would teach them accordingly from our scriptures. This continued for several hundred years until the idolatry, first it was, it was um, the political structure was set up by Constantine, mm -hmm. the emperor of the Roman Empire, about 325, and that emboldened the, the, um, the Romans to progress and to, to get a lot of power. But they couldn't stop the appointment of the bishops from, Carth from Carthage in North Africa by our Israelite ancestors. The way that they were able to achieve that is something that is very, very prominent today. Through deception and through, uh, what do you call it, where we stab each other in the back. Mm -hmm. And they, they found that one of the bishops that they appointed, I think is, he was Bishop Stephen, he did not do as he was instructed to do, but he betrayed his own. And because of that betrayal, then the Romans or the priesthood there, of the Catholics, they appealed to the emperor at the time, and he started to investigate them. And everything changed with that dynamic. That goes back to the days of, of Elder Cyprian and Elder Donatus and, and people like that. And a lot of them were, there was a time even when you could not even have the Israelite scriptures in Rome. They had to burn. There were so many books burnt back then, you know. But the, the idea was to use violence to usurp the authority of the Israelites and gain that power that they exercised over time. And once you have the power, then you can do anything you want. Now... Christianity gave birth in the time of Paul. I'm not saying that Paul started Christianity, but in that time, it kind of started to grow. And as the Israelites migrated, did that, that migration give Christianity that, that, that room to grow and build and become a powerhouse? Well, I have, I have to disagree with that statement because... There was no Christianity until about the 16th century. What happened at the time of Paul was that we sent him out as a minister to teach, mm -hmm. to introduce to the Gentiles and the opportunity to learn about our God who created the heavens and the earth. It is, it is one thing to know that you exist regardless of who you are, but it is another thing to know why and to know who created all of what you are taking for granted and enjoying and benefiting from. So Paul went to teach them, to share with them the wisdom of our Israelite forefathers, and he did a very good job. However, he was constantly battling idolatry all over Europe, and it didn't begin there. <clears throat> it started out in Babylon, and then it went from Babylon to Egypt, and it was magnified in Egypt. And a lot of the, the Europeans benefited from Israelite, sorry, from Egyptian knowledge, Egyptian wisdom, under the name of the Kabbalah. Mm -hmm. the, the Greeks got it by way of the Phoenicians, and then they passed it on to the Romans, and then the Romans were also in Egypt, and they got some of it. So before you knew it, all this idolatry is prevalent throughout all of Europe. And that is what gave them the, the confidence and to challenge what our forefathers were trying to teach. Because, you know, we might think, well, yeah, we serve the right God and everything, and I appreciate that. But they got results from their God, too. So you cannot negate 
mm-hmm. that they were be able, they were in a position of a th- of power as well. And all that we could do is to continue to do according to the, the terms of the covenant. And sometimes that works for us, but it doesn't work for anyone else outside. Idolatry. You're talking about um, worshiping one God, many gods? Idolatry is worshiping false gods. False gods. Okay. Yeah. But we only would know who was false and who was real. And if we don't get a chance to teach you, then you're not going to know. But you I will see. benefit. I think today they call it voodoo or obia. Um, you know, that's where the cross comes into play. And some of the Europeans, they wear the cross on their forehead when they worship. It's black, cube. And then others, they unfold it. And it becomes, so one is a cube when it's folded. And when it's unfolded, then it becomes the cross. Yeah. I see. Now, I have to ask, um, in the scriptures, it does mention Christian. Mm-hmm. Is Christian different from Christianity? Yes. How Christ- so? Christian is, well, first of all, Christian was spelled C-R-I-T-E-N. Because I think it's a French or, or Swiss, one of those um, uh, origins. And it means retard, idiot, stupid, mm-hmm. anything like that. Mm-hmm. Because our Israelite forefathers were called Christians at Antioch about the year 50. Notice they were called Christians by the Gentiles. But the question begs itself, who were they before they were called Christians? And even after they were called Christians. So it's like my throwing the N-word at somebody. You know, it, it doesn't identify them. It's just an insult, you see? So it just, I always find it rather interesting because if they called us Christians in the year 50, then they adopted that name now they're using the N word, right? Are they going to use that word to, as a philosophy, one of their a religious experience? I see. Eventually, and how how much time is it, is it going to take before they call themselves the N word? So yes, um, that word meant retard, and it it's a it reflected a medical condition. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a thyroid disorder. And the thyroid gland, for those of you that know, if it's overly stimulated, then you can grow up to seven feet tall or yes. higher. If it's under-stimulated, then you become a dwarf. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when you've got a dwarf, you have a big head, you got hands that are probably too long for your body. So everything is messed up. And not only that, in, a, in appearance, you not only look unattractive, from some people anyway, you also have a mental disorder. So then it, I did this research uh, years ago, and I thought, because I thought the word Christian, the way it is spelled, it's not that bad. But when you understand it's not that spelling, that's the English version of it. Right. But the original version of it wasn't like that. It's, C, it's French or, or Latin or something, C-R-E-T-I-N. And peop, I invite you know, your, your, your audience to take a look and investigate this for themselves and see exactly what I'm saying. Now, what would make them use that term? That's the question. Yeah. So let's say I remembered when the Romans went into the temple in Jerusalem. It was Titus, I think, I believe. And um, he was looking for the God because how are these people? There's just a handful of people, but they're so, they're so good at fighting. You know, and if they fight in the Roman Empire, come mm-hmm. on, guys. And you're making us having second thoughts about the battle at sometimes, who is your God? And they went to look because they had Mars and Jupiter and Apollo and Zeus and everybody. Yeah. And when they looked, they went to the temple, there's nothing. No image. At best, there was just a seven-branch candlestick. They're like, where's the God? But they took that anyway. Right. Right. And they, they have an arch in, in, in Rome today that reflect that. The key here is how was it then that these people, Israelites, could worship a God that they cannot see? And we, as Gentile Europeans, we have a dozens of gods, and we got us images for every one of them. That's right. They must be retards. They must be Christians. And the only people that they could identify that was, was the people in the Alp, Alpine region, region uh, that looked strange and acted strange.